with Miss Panda. I'm your host, Amanda Schoen Blodgett. Today, I have a very special guest. It is, she's Daria from Daria World Music with Daria. And Daria is um, not only a world music performer for children, but also an educator. And we're so happy to have her with us today. Hello, Daria. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful, and I'm very excited to be here because I love what you do, and we're both building bridges, you with languages and me with music. Yes. Daria has been performing for the past 20 years. Well, it's amazing to see her collection of music, not only in CDs and also different kind of learning material, cultural presentations, music performing sessions in different events. And her, she has recently launched an app and to help families and teachers and educators to use at school at home and anywhere you know you go and that is just amazing and then Daria's music not only um, is of spreading the United States but also to South America and also to Australia and she traveled extensively in the world and then how does she do that how is she going to spread so much with children around the world I think we're going to have Dario, um, Dario to let us um, give us an introduction, a little bit of briefing on her cultural background and language background. Dario, can you share that with us? Yes, I am. And you know what? I was going to start with a little bit of music, which I hope you can hear. So starting with a little bit of music, I just wanted to tell you that I grew up in a family where there were always lots of languages. My grandfather came from Ukraine and he moved to a small town where everyone was an immigrant and they all, they all kind of learned each other's languages. My mother's family came from an area in Poland that had also crossed a border to Germany. So they needed to know Polish, they needed to know German. And where they lived, they needed to learn all their neighbors' languages. And it just made their town richer. They understood that being a good neighbor meant knowing a little about your friend's culture, knowing what they like to eat, and then sharing who you were with them. And I loved how that kind of informed what I wanted to do. Um, as a little girl, I remember going to a yard sale and seeing a, a, um, a record. Now, that's how old I am, because it was a record. And it said something like, Eileen so-and-so sings in eight languages. And I remember my daughter and saying, oh, could I do that? She sings in eight languages. And the story was that she traveled to all the towns around her in Ohio. And everywhere she went, she sang the languages of the people she visited. And I thought, oh, can you really do that? Can you do that for a living? And strangely enough, that was what I've ended up doing, is taking what I knew from my family and from my community and then going to the different communities where I lived or worked or played music and taught what I knew, but then was able to learn something new. And then you take that in your little peddler's pack and you go to the next place, always sharing kind of the wonder and the fun and the education, but that bridge building aspect of music. Right. Well, you know, from your name, actually, we can see that. <laughs> Yes, because you know when when you when I see your name, I was like, wow, you know how how do we how do we pronounce your name and where is that name come from? And then I think that's definitely something very interesting. See, Daria Mermaluk Hasio Anu. That's a very interesting and very different name. We don't see it all the time, but you can tell that's a. That's a culture. There are a lot of cultures in a name and just like everybody's name. And that's always make people curious, you know, where are you from? And do people ask you like, where are you from? What's your culture background? And then, like you said, your story is beautiful. You, you heard somebody doing that and you want to be a part of that. Well, you're passionate about it as, as I can see. And I think of many people who have been to your, your events and all visited your website, they can see that, you know, with your collection of uh, wonderful resources. So how about now in your own family, with your own kids, how do, how do you manage the multicultural aspect and then the multi-language aspects um, at home? 
Well, I think what we do is we really do try to make that space for things like hol holidays and celebrations. And, um, you know, we love like watching many of my friends are like filmmakers. So we'll watch the films they've made whether it's from our tradition or another tradition. Many of our friends are musicians. So the kids would come with us to go to, say, an event with all people from Chile or all people from Ecuador. And then, you know, all the Spanish we spoke at home, they would get that little bit of encouragement like you know this isn't just sil something silly you do at home this is something that means you can talk to that person you know so they got that and um, my husband's family's from Greece so we were very very lucky to be able to send them back one a year once uh, my father or my husband with my daughter then my husband with my son to visit the little island he grew up on Wow. So you needed to know Greece. My husband would say, no, I'm not going to order that for you. You have to go to the little store on the corner and ask for it in Greek. So <laughs> it was just, we, we would really, sometimes children get a little antsy about learning languages and we just have to find fun ways. Uh, my daughter was uncomfortable when she was 10 in Peru, but carnivals were going on. And I said, well, I'm not going to buy you your water balloons. You have, uh, you know what they are. Go to the store, and here's the money. And and but she wanted those water balloons so much, she struck up a conversation. And now you know the word globos is always in her mind because she wanted to throw water balloons with her friends. And so sometimes you do have to add a little encouragement. But then I see her when she's not watching me or my son, and they're very proud. They know what words mean. They know what different things are, and their friends go, how do you know that? So even though they sometimes won't fess up to it, you do see them saying, you know what, I am so glad that we have such an unusual family. That is, uh, that is always fabulous to hear your kids a little older. So I think you have gone through the journey. You're still on the journey. But I think that's definitely something very interesting. It's like a playful learning. You try oh, to yes. make a learning fun, but at the same time, to the kids, maybe it's not learning, it's more playing because they have a goal. They want to be a part of the carnival because they want to eat something. So they need yeah. to try that. So that kind of applies to the bubble tea for my kids. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. The more, you, the more you make it fun, you know, Mr. Rogers said play is a child's work. So instead of work, if we can find fun ways to play, then the language is, it just all goes right inside. Right. And, and I think that's so true because it, it is just so much fun to see kids enjoy, you know, what you want to teach them. And then I think that really helped them a lot. And then so, so we talk about the music, we talk about the language back, background, and then we're going to come back to talk about you, your music. Because, you know, you're named an ambassador of song. And then you have been traveling around the world to deliver your diverse music to children around the world. You know, um, not just only Spanish, your music in Spanish, the songs in Spanish, in Hebrew, in, you know, different languages. I, I think that's something very interesting. How, what's the role of world music to children? And how do you deliver that to kids? What's your goal when you are doing the performances and visit the kids in different parts of the world? Well, what I love to do is give them a hands-on approach. Like if we're going to learn a Native American song, I will bring out a, a large skin that's like a drum, and I give them the beaters where they can hit. And as we hit, we learn new words or we'll count to 10. And when they get to play, and then we'll do little games so that the leader has to know when to stop and then they get to choose the next leader. So we turn it into a game, but we get them actually hands on a real drum. And it gives them an excitement about that culture where maybe before they would have said, oh, I don't know about that. You know, those people look different. Those people talk different. Those people eat different things. They don't live right near me. You know, there might be a sense of fear or anxiety anxiety because there's so much of that in the world and instead when you start getting them to play and have fun and when you explain oh that's why we sing that song that's what that song is for a special time you know in your life and the children go oh I have that time in my life too you know like singing what's a birthday song or what's a birthday tradition they go oh yes I have a birthday too it, it, it starts to make us all realize that we really are one that those people that might look a little different or that might speak a little different, really are having exactly the same experience we have. And that what makes them different is what makes them interesting.
That's true. That is very true. And also, I think, you know, when you are doing the performance, oh, I saw a video of you doing an event. That was fantastic. I see all the kids coming in. They were all excited. And I think the one thing is very important when we are teaching or we want to get the kids um, excited when we're doing an event is to involve them. I think that's exactly what you're doing. And then I think when you do hands-on activities, kids can touch, they can feel, they can hear, they can be a part of it. And then that excitement just goes beyond, you know, description. And so what is the, what is the, why it is important to, to expose kids to world music, Daria? Well, I think that it, it comes back to that idea of building bridges instead of walls. That children, um, in their life, they're going to meet many different people. If they're lucky, like you and I, they get to travel to different places. They may be, they may marry or may have someone in their family from an entirely different culture. So opening up those, those kind of um, ideas as a child, that diversity is beautiful and that what makes us different is what makes us truly unique. We may have a problem and you may be able to solve it in a way I could never solve it. So we need each other. And I think it's like that in the world. We need all of each other. We need to come together in respect and dignity. And when we do, and the fun way to do is to use music or food or dance or language games. And I saw so many of the things you do, games and songs. And a child will never forget that if they have a fun time, if it was um, a joke or a game, they will never forget those words. And then later on, when they need to build a bridge, all those memories will be there instead of fear. And that's what we need, more bridges and less walls. That's true. That's very true. And I think another thing is, well, you know, even though their, their families, they have a different culture backgrounds, and then family, they may be having interracial marriage, like we talk about. I think there are also now a lot of families, even though they are from the one culture, but they want to share with kids with a lot of different, expose their kids to different cultures and different languages. And I think here, we want to, you know, kind of introduce different resources to the families and to, to be able to find a place to find resources, to um, learn about different cultures, to learn about different languages. I think that's something, like you said, it's a, it's a bridge for, for families and for schools, for kids. So I think when they know each other, knowing each other from the songs, from culture events, from festivities, I think they feel closer to each other. And at the same time, they feel, well, we're actually very similar. We're not that different. And I think that's the fun thing about it. So talk oh, about yes. And isn't it about rebuilding community? Because before people lived in kind of small tribes or small towns like my grandparents, and you could know everyone. Well, nowadays it's hard to know everyone, but through our festivals and through you know our meetings with people, through our games together, then we realize that although it might be a little larger and it might be a little more complex, we're still a community and we still need each other and care about each other. You know, we don't need to wait for a disaster to all come together. We can come together every day in every way and, and make each other's life richer. Exactly. So we talk about music. We talk about the wonderful um, music and then we talk about um, bringing together a community, get to know each other. Actually, Daria has a surprise for us. We have a song. We want to sing a song for, for everybody. And then Daria has the instruments. So should we try it? Absolutely. We're going to do this uh, classical Chinese children's song, and I'm going to do it in Mandarin Chinese, and Daria is going to do it in Spanish. And here we go. The song is Liang Zhi Lao Hu, Two Tigers. Liang Zhi Lao Hu, Liang Zhi Lao Hu, Pao De Kui, Pao De Kui. Daria, ready? In Spanish. Son dos tigres, son dos tigres, corriendo rápido. Uno si es ciego, el otro falta cola, corriendo rápido. Hey. Wow, yay! <laughs> 
So we just mashed a song together, Mandarin <laughs> and Spanish. It's perfect. Exactly. You translated it so well. Well, I know the part I did is I use another version. I say no years, but you say no tails. But isn't it fun when you sing, you just... You feel happy. I think that's the, oh. the, the thing for, for kids and for adults, for everyone. Singing is so magical. Oh, absolutely. And you know, in Native culture, they say the very first sound a child heard was a heartbeat, which is like the drum. So when you move in that rhythm, what you're doing is you're almost going back to that first experience you had. And that was a wonderful experience. You're here and there's a beat and they say children know it and hear it. So it ties into now what people are saying, you know, the whole child, not just your brain and not just this, but your body getting moving and you know, feeling and knowing and being the whole child. Exactly. Well, what we talk about all the, um, we, what was the fun? It's, what is, it's really fun. We should do it again. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's a direct translation from Mandarin, from Mandarin Chinese. You know, it's not a, a, um, a, the Spanish version because the translation word by word is in, in, um, in uh, the Mandarin Chinese to Spanish. So it's just really fun to hear that. And it's just beautiful. Okay, now we're going to... Um, Talk about, talk about the resources you have. You have a wonderful website, Daria World Music for Children. You also have, um, you also have a, a YouTube channel. And um, you, well, I'm going to let you to introduce all the resources you have. But I think most importantly, can you first talk about the app you just launched very recently? Because I, I think with a mobile app, uh, the families, parents, educators, teachers can actually can use that to. Um, to engage their students and, and find resources in the classroom, not only for music, but for culture um, events and culture crafts. And then can you talk about your app and all the resources you are providing to the community? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's just so much fun to teach about music, to make musical crafts, to do songs, to teach about the background of songs. And so I set up the YouTube channel that had all these different things on it. And I found a company that would create an app and the app will play some videos. It will teach games where you identify instruments and their cultures. Um, we even made some little eBooks where you can see how to make, for instance, your own version of a shake array from Africa. Wow. And the cool thing is while you're working with literacy, while you're reading, you're also making your own version of this out of things you definitely do have at home. Now this one is quite lovely, but the ones you can make would be truly creative as well. So many, many times parents or teachers say, oh, that's so interesting, but you live halfway around the country or halfway around the world. So I wanted to find ways where they could kind of go in their kitchen cabinet or go in their craft room and still make versions of instruments and play with them and listen to rhythms and kind of, like you said, hands-on learning, not the kind of listen to the, sit and listen to the teacher, but instead try it, add your own twist, ask a question. As you know, children learn differently. So some will be interested in the rhythm, some will be interested in the song, some will be interested in crafting, but they all dovetail back to that learning. Awesome. And when you kind of get children excited, then the learning just happens. And it happens beautifully and effortlessly. So the app is there. That's free. Um, on my Teachers Pay Teacher store, so many of my things are free. I give away as many as I can. And sometimes I even rotate whole books for free. So if you follow me there, you'll find when, you know, I'm offering like his 12 Hispanic heritage crafts. And for a week or so, they'll be free. But you can find all the things I've done. And um, you, know, you can find some great resources. And like you said, you can reach out to me. You know, I hear from people in different countries. And um, one of my songs was used to teach tolerance to kindergartners in Australia. And it started with an email saying, I, I, your song teaches kids to care about each other. Can I use it? My answer was, yes, 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 please use it. So there are all these things I like to put out there because you never know what the need is. And in any way I can participate in that, I would love to do it. It's a joy to do what you love for a living. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. <laughs> I just want to keep writing more, singing more, creating more. 
And then I, I think um, talking about music and then all the resources you have, and I think, you know, you like to reach out to connect with people. I think it's definitely something very, very true. And that's why sometimes I would feel the world is getting smaller. Before you, it's really hard to, to touch and make something so far away from us. But because you are so creative, you say, wow, look at this instrument, but what you can do it, you know, make one on your own. And I think that really make kids feel different. You know, they feel like this is something they can touch and they can, they can feel it and they can try it out. And then, um, and I think also um, you have a uh, wonderful song is uh, for uh, Mark, Dr. Martin Luther King. And I think that has been used, you know, wide, you know, in the United States and then Mother's Day is coming. And I know you have a, you have a special song for Mother's Day. Would you like to talk about that? Oh, yeah, there's a wonderful song. It's, it's from the Zulu tradition, which is, if you look down the very, very south part of Africa, it's called Here Comes Our Mothers Bringing Us Presents. And it's actually a song that children would sing when their mothers would go. They would go to market, they would sell what they had, and they would buy what they needed. And they always had a little money left over. With that little money, they thought of their children. Ah, oh, what can I do? And so they would think, would they, do they like sweets? Do they like oranges? Do they like pineapples? And the children at home, they're being very good. They're not fighting. They're, they're sweeping without being told. They're doing all the good things because they know their mother's coming home. But they can't stand it when they finally see them coming down the road or over the hill. And they break out into song. Here comes our mothers bringing us presents. And in the song, it changed all the time because they would say, I could see apples. I can see bananas. I can see cookies. I can see sweet things. Whatever that child would want, they're going to put in there along with the words, here come our mothers. So it was kind of an homage to mom saying, no matter what moms have to struggle with, they're all, their children are always in their heart and they're always thinking of something sweet to bring to them. I mean, it oh. showed up in apples and bananas and cookies, but the truth is that it really shows up in love. Oh, that is beautiful. That it's, is great, it's such a beautiful little song and it's mostly in English with a Zulu chorus, so it's a great song to learn. It, it, you, you can understand it right away, but you can also add those couple of words in Zulu. Zulu, excuse me. Zulu, wow, that is so fun. Um, so I believe it's free on YouTube, and then yep. you, well, you should go check it out. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, and well, we talk about music, and I know Daria has a treasure box or treasure chest with a lot of beautiful musical instruments from all over the world. Would you like to share some of your treasures with us? Oh, absolutely. I definitely brought them along. I wanted to show you, um, I don't know if I showed you this before, Amanda. It's a singing bowl from Tibet, and it's quite heavy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just ring it like a bell. So that's ringing, but the wonderful thing about this bowl is that it sings. So I'm going to move it from ringing to singing, and I'm hoping you can hear that. I can, and then can we go? Move back a little bit so we can see the whole wall. Yeah. Yes. Now I'm going to just quietly stop it. But can you imagine that a bowl could make noise like that? That's amazing. What is it made of? This one is, I believe, is made of copper, or they're all made of metal, and each one is, is fabricated a little differently and is played a little differently, but they all have their own kind of unique tone and charm and they're uh, truly they're used um, often to start or to end a meditation yes. and most people say when they hear it they feel a sense of kind of quiet or peace a desire to just relax to just listen and I think that's a wonderful experience for children as well you know music can be loud and expressive and, and it can be letting it out but it can also be getting quiet and going within Absolutely. And it's like that music can do really both of those things for us. Right. I think that should be used for nap time in kindergarten. <laughs> I have also an ocean drum. <laughs> when you play it, you go like this back and forth, and it emulates the sound of the sea. And everyone, even, even grown-ups our age, go, oh, that just makes me want to take a nap. <laughs> it, just, it gives you that kind of calm and that... that sense of uh, peace as if you were just sitting there on a beautiful beach by the ocean. Wow, how do we say then the name of the instrument again, from Tibet? 
Oh, um, the Tibet is the singing bowl. Singing bowl. That's beautiful. So let's see what's next. So I also brought, um, it's called a tongue rattle, and it is from Uganda in Africa. And I'm not sure, can you see the carved faces on this? Yeah. To me, a lot of these are just beautiful pieces of artwork, and you know, I would almost hang them up on the wall, except for the fact that they make great music. Mm -hmm. My wrist is gonna go back and forth. Bulani ring, ring, bulani ring, you boys and girls. Bulani ring, ring, bulani ring, you boys and girls. You are my great big friend. Take your hand, dance in a ring with you. You are my great big friend. Take your hand, dance in a ring with you, and then I can go like that. I want to know how that instrument makes noise, makes the sound. So, Is that on the well, end? Can you show us the end? So it's called a tongue rattle, so you're not going to be surprised when what list looks almost like a tongue in someone's mouth going back and forth, only that would be a strange mouth because there's two tongues. <laughs> the silly story, the story about is it's supposed to emulate someone who talks too much, someone whose tongue is always going blah, 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 blah. And when I tell that to kids, it always makes them laugh, but instruments emulate things. Some instruments sound like the wind. Right. This one sounds like someone that's always going blah, 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 blah. So that it is, is so a tune now. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love it when you sing and then you, you rattle and then you say, well, this is, a, you know, imitates people who are talking too much. I think kids will be like, oh. <laughs> it, it's fun to read, you know, it, it does totally relate to their world. They all know someone or they all know something like that. Yes. Now, the neat thing, too, yes, is absolutely. that yeah, absolutely. I bring a lot of things that are very natural because I tell people, you know, sometimes, um, you know, it, people don't have a music store. Maybe they live so rurally that, they, that, that they're far away from everything, but that doesn't mean they don't make music. So I have here a seed pod that fell from a tree. It's called a pakai shaker, but it is a musical instrument, and it is the dried seeds in there that are giving us that sound. Wow, look at well, look at that. It's so pretty. Did you pay for the decoration there or it's just <laughs> no, it came like that. Like that. <laughs> but I just love it. I think they wanted to add a little twist to it. But mm -hmm. uh, how amazing that you simply can find something and realize, oh look, that makes sound. It can and some people sometimes children say, Oh, that sounds like a rattlesnake, or that sounds like um a rattle. And what they song would go with this new this, this instrument? So this could be found in Africa, but it also can be found in Mexico. And uh, you could just play it when there's, when there's lots of instruments so you can keep the beat with it. So it isn't so much something you would sing with, it's just something that adds a little extra percussion. But right. clearly you could do something like, this little chicken that you brought to my house, this little chicken that you brought to my house, beep, 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 is all that she tells me, beep, 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 all the day long. Ese pollito que tú me regalaste, ese pollito que tú me regalaste, pío, 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 siempre me dice, pío, 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 en su corral. Hey! Here we go! All right! So that was a little chicken song. That's that's beautiful. The chicken song, the ducky song. Well, I think this thing is, it's like a party time. So everybody can have fun with any kind of instruments. And then I also know you even use a lot of a recycled materials to engage kids to, to, to make an instrument and also washboard. Can you talk about that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. So that comes with the same idea that people use what they have. They don't wait until someone gifts them a piano or a violin. I imagine somebody was deciding they could either wash dirty socks or they could make music. And what do you think they did? I'm not crazy. I make music. I don't want to watch the dirty socks. And so I, I show them how you play it with thimbles on your fingers um, or grab a spoon. And we just rub back and forth and, and it turns into a band. And it's so wonderful. Basic rhythms, simple songs, even before children to school every day sometimes when children stayed at home a mom or dad would sit there and they would be playing songs that would teach the alphabet or that would teach numbers so many songs from Appalachia where you'd see the washboard they're counting songs so parents were teaching their giving their children the skills they needed 
by these funny little songs that the kids would always remember because you know you can't forget you have to add each one on that's right wow thank you so much daria i i think it's uh, fascinating to see actually music is all around my kids used to use the spoons they use my pots and uh and they are having a great time making music or rhythm or we're having a pots and pans party and uh, <laughs> I, it's exactly the same idea so i think parents need to be a part of this and then make the learning fun make the music be a part of it and then listen and say hey let's look what else you know what other people use in, you know, around the world and let's try to see if they sound differently and thank you so much for sharing your treasures with us it was just fantastic and oh, um, this was so much fun and i'm glad you brought that up about playing with your children because Sometimes I think children, I don't know if you found this, they're shy. You know, they wonder, can I do that well? And if you as a grown up learn, say, learn an instrument with your child, even just a shaker, or learn something like a simple flute, and they see that you can't do it right away, they learn from you patience. They learn that you'll try and you'll fail, but you'll try again. And they don't feel bad if the first time they pick up an instrument they can't play it correctly you're teaching them a skill they're going to need for life is that sometimes it takes a few tries to do something and sometimes it takes a few more and so even if you feel like as many parents do oh my goodness i don't like my voice or oh my goodness i'm not a good musician there's so many ways you can start and you can play a song with your child and in that way incur you grow while they grow and at the same time, you make beautiful music together. You really do come together in harmony. Yeah. Well, that's that's um, that makes a great activity for family time. <laughs> Don't you think? And everybody can do something. Awesome. You know, even the tiniest child can have, you know, a, a little thing on their wrist. And when they move their wrist, when I work with people who have limited physical abilities, we they we often work with them to make things for their wrists or their feet, then when they move, all of a sudden, they're still part of the music. Absolutely. Everyone has a place in music. Nobody left out. Right. Oh, that is just wonderful, Daria. I think we learned so much from you. Well, I would like to, the very last question, I would like to have you to share with us your top tips of using music um, to help kids to learn a new language. And then also, what are your tips for parents who want to raise young global citizens? Well, we've been talking a lot about it, and it's just reach out to things that interest your child. If your child is interested in the drum, like you said, they play pots and pans, that's the way to start. Then look for drums from other cultures. Look for the cultures in your family or in your neighborhood or in your school. My friend, my child has a friend whose culture is this. Oh my goodness, let's look into those steel drums. Start with where they're at, what excites them, what really makes them glow. And once you find that, run with it and have fun with them with it. Listen to their questions. If their questions are about the beat, then, then play with rhythms. If their questions are about the culture, if their questions are, can I wear an interesting dress from India while I play this, these, yes, then work with them to have fun with that because starting with what they truly love, you can help them develop their passion. And music is one of those ways in which it's almost always fun and it, it's almost always not restrictive. There's always a way you can begin and learn and kids find it very gratifying. When a child finds learning gratifying, they want to learn more. They want to grow more. And so just kind of work with your child rather than against them and the language will slip in there find a song that maybe came from your background. Maybe there was a song your parents sang to you that you'll never forget. Make sure you sing that to your child because then you're passing that along one more generation and their children, your children will probably pass it to their children. What a treasure, a gift from your ancestors That's to right. your, to those who come, to those who come for us. So have fun with it. Don't worry about whether you were, if you were getting a 10 on world's best singer, worry about the fun you're having with your kid just have fun just learn and never be afraid to keep learning with them as well yes be silly with your kids because you're the champion in the family absolutely <laughs> and silliness joy is contagious 
Absolutely, Daria. I totally agree. Well, Daria, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful world music resources with us and in your cultural, global cultural experience with us. Um, I'm going to put all the resources of Daria's World Music for Children in the um, the post on my website, Miss Panda Chinese, and parents and teachers, you will be able to click through and then find all kinds of resources Daria has for all of you. And for my oh, audience today, thank you so much. And Daria, thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, it is my pleasure. And please go enjoy Amanda's music as well. This is just such a great way to learn Mandarin. Mandarin is such a beautiful language. So I'm glad you're enjoying me, but I know you're already enjoying uh, Amanda, Miss Panda. This is just such a great way to have fun and learn at exactly the same time. Thank you, Daria. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and today. Yeah, what a wonderful tell them to write to us. Tell them what they think. Did they learn something? Was it fun? We, I know we'd both love to hear from them. Absolutely, yeah. So leave us a comment and let us know and uh, how you're enjoying this interview. And then any questions for us? So if you are looking for something um, you want to know about the world um, music, and uh, don't, don't be hesitant to uh, um, ask Daria and she will be uh, happy to help you and connect you um, to uh, have an event and uh, provide you different resources and direct you to the right direction. So thank you so much and for joining us today. Have a wonderful afternoon and I'll see you next time. 再见,我们下次见。